with Paul Dane and Mark Salafoe. Kick off the weekend, all right? It's the Growler Friday Show. It's Who Day Night. There it is, Mark. How are we doing? It's Friday. Who Day Light is here. It has survived. Yeah, we didn't Week get canceled. One. Yes, way to go, episode two. Here we We're go. We're doing it. We made it out. happen. I'm excited. I mean, Free agency is around the corner, and it it's is. fun. At least to be a Bengals fan, it's more fun than it used to be. It does feel like Cincinnati weather to me, where it's just we think we know what should happen, but anything could happen. It could snow. It could be ninety. Who knows? You know, I I touched on this with Jay the other day. It's remarkable how much everything has changed uh, in recent years. I, I, this used to be the greatest time for me. I, everyone else would freak out and have so much to do. And I would just kick my feet up and wait to see what like second string guard they re-signed. You know, it was just, there's uninvolved, no real expectations, but now it's, now it's busy. It's fun. Um, it's it's exciting. So it's good. It's a nice it's a nice time of year for the new Bengals for sure. Yeah, and it, you got to be on your toes because there's like only three positions that are settled on this team. Apparently, if you read online, they're going to be getting free agents at every single position. They're going to roll <laughs> into this season with seven tight ends, six running backs. So that's going to be a lot for you to cover. A lot of stories. It, it's <laughs> it's only the best of the best too. It's, it's going to be really hard to cover that many very rich people. Uh, so let's uh, let's kind of recap here. Uh, first week in the books for the Growler and uh, Balds don't lie. PD and J. This being who they like coming to you every uh, every Friday with Mark and I and uh, we we made it to here. We hope that you have subscribed. If you you know it's wherever you get your podcasts, as they like to say, uh, you can find us on iTunes. You can find us on Spotify. You can find us. Not on Google Podcasts, sorry, which is apparently going away, but I just found out it was a thing. I didn't even know Google Podcasts were a thing, and now they're going away. See, short, I've been telling everybody that you have a personal feud with Google, and that's why yeah. the show wasn't on Google Podcasts. <laughs> I'm like, you, you got to talk to Paul. He doesn't get along with the big yeah. algorithm, so yeah. Big alg, big alg. You know, we've, we've, we've long we, – talk about people not to fight with. Probably not going to pick a fight with big algorithm. I don't think. I think I need them. Yeah, uh, we'll do whatever they want us to do. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, again, this is sort of the lighter version of the podcast that we do to kick off your weekend. But you guys drive it, okay? Um, send us your questions. Send them to Mark because he is here to ambush me with anything. So if you don't want to ask because you're afraid that I would just draw a line through it, Mark prefers to make me feel awkward i've asked for that honestly uh and be surprised by wherever you guys want to take this it's your show i'm here for Bengals. we're here for whatever and to see where it goes so make sure you guys are sending your questions in for whatever you'd like us to touch on every week there'll be tons of news there's tons of news now there'll be even more next week so maybe that'll be part of it but uh i'm ready and a lot of people think that you're kind of judgy when it comes to questions. So if, if people are afraid that they're going to get personally judged by Paul, mm. I'm very welcoming. I'll take all your dumb questions, your good questions, and we'll roll them into the questions I hit Paul with. I have one of my own before we jump into all the newsy stuff this week. Wrapping up the combine, from a reporter standpoint, I heard you talking about you know the late nights in Indianapolis. What is that like reporting on that kind of stuff. Cause in my head, it's a lot of like, okay, it's more about relationship building. You know, you're trying to connect with different sources or coaches out at uh, the late nights that you have, or is it really just boring watching guys running wind sprints? I have not watched a single player run with my own eyes in the history of my time covering the combine. I think that's a really, that's a big misconception of that event and what, what it is. Um, it is, I mean, there are obviously lots of people that do that. And and I think, you know, whether you're talking about the draft, big, big draft, the draft industrial complex, uh, or any of these people uh, that, that are really focused on that aspect of it. But when you're, you know, when you're on the team side, when you're on the beat side, um, it is an exhausting marathon of early morning, Lots of, you know, we, I, I, we talked to, I think I, we ended up talking to seven, seven coaches, including coordinators and Duke 
on the record and then lots of off the record around because everyone's just kind of hanging out and then you eat and everyone goes out to go drink. I mean, that yeah, they go walk around Indianapolis, they go to bars and you never know who you'll run into. That could be people from other teams. It could be agents. It could be coaches. It could be anybody. And you end up, it could, you know, you end up having conversations with you. You never know who um, you meet up with people for coffee, whatever. I mean, there's a lot of that from morning to night, very little sleep. Everyone's kind of exhausted. So by the end of it, you're pretty, you're pretty beat up, but it's more information and relationship building than it is anything to do with, Oh, I learned about, you know, the, the guard from Oregon. Yeah. Well, that's a very antiquated style of sports reporting. Like it feels old school that, you know, you're out there at the bars getting tips from all the insiders and that sort of thing. You get to drink on the job. There's not many times that you get to do that right during the season. I think, it, you know, I view it as like, uh, you know, back in the day, I, I met some people in my days working the Marriott bar, which I've referenced before uh, in pharmaceutical sales. And I view it that way. It's like sales. You know, yeah. you just sort of the best time to hang out is usually after the convention. People are sitting around the bar decompressing and and you end up talking about God knows what. It's all, you know, if you have enough trust that you're willing to talk. And that's where the bar napkin deal happens. It's where uh, that's where your next thing you know, you're I just sold a million stethoscopes and I had a martini, <laughs> you know. And so off we go is kind of the, 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 the way that and that's why. If you if you pay attention to the news in information about what teams are doing and free agency and all of that, the narrative changes dramatically after the combine week because everybody actually has a better feel. There's so much speculation because uh, teams are trying to figure it out before then. But when everybody shows up there, they have a pretty good idea what they're trying to do. And then a lot of people that um, have loose lips and uh, – and our little leaky end up uh, spreading the word across the league. And next thing you know, you've got a lot of narratives. That's fun though, because during the season, those rhythms are regular where it's like, here's a press conference, here's the post game. And there's not a lot of like, okay, we're going to beat the bar with this guy and really get the truth behind this story or, or whatever. Um, well, I, the, only, the only thing about that is that I, I, you know, I've tried to, you don't want them to think they're trying to get you drunk. Like I not, cause I'm not like, that's, and I, you know, you, that's you where the up, relationship stuff comes yeah, in. Yeah, but it's like, this is what we would do. This is what I now. would yeah. do. Like when I say, come, let's, let's have a drink or, hey, you know, buy them a drink. It's like, that's because that's what I would do. And I, and you never want them to think I'm trying to get you drunk uh, and spill all the secrets. Uh, yeah, those drinks aren't on the record. Yeah. No, those are off the record drinks. They pay off farther down the line. But that's just interesting to me because like with my job, I can drink on the job. I can have a beer on stage. Uh, there's not a lot of times I'm expecting you to be slamming beers during the game from the press box, you know? So it's a little no. bit different environment when you're uh, working sources. I wish I could. That sounds like a great idea. I, I can tell you. I don't know if I can think of a few seasons. I can tell you a few seasons where I thought about rolling a cooler into the press box. Let's see. I would love to see the story right after 2019, that. 2019. <laughs> that were, uh, I really don't really need to be paying attention to this game. Uh, all right. Let's, let's jump get... into some of these questions we've got from people. Let's do it. Um, let's see. It. What do we got? It's going to be a busy couple of weeks. So we're going to start right in here. Many people ruling out the big defensive tackle, splashy free agency signing. Last year, though, huge move on the offensive line came out of nowhere. Do you think the Bengals could have another one of those big shock free agency signings this year? Um, yeah, probably I say probably not, but you you really don't know how things are going to go. And and you're right. I mean, last year, last year certainly was surprising. I mean, that thing came together. I it ended up being my most well read, subscribed to whatever you want to call it. Story from last year was on how the Orlando Brown thing came together because it was fascinating. Um it came out of nowhere over about a 48 hour period where no one, I mean, he was on their radar, but he was like, you know, you had to list him at number one on your list because you had, you make a list of five and, but he was never one that they even looked at to even think about until he all of a sudden showed up in their laps. So you don't know. I mean, that's always possible that that could happen. Um, I don't think so just because I, 
I think they have a clearer view of their needs and and entry points there to to make it happen at the levels they want to. And the shock only happens because uh, a market comes back to them a little bit because they're they're not going to be living at the shocking value. You're not going to be trying to just sign one big guy. Um, so I, I, you know, I don't think that that will happen. Um, but that's the excitement of next week is you you always end up with some batch of surprises. I mean, a couple of years ago, I mean, they fired out Kappa and Karras 10 minutes into the free agency period, a team that had never paid interior offensive linemen in their lives and never really fully like embraced the first wave was the first team off the board with two interior offensive linemen. So you, I, I, my days of trying to be specific on how it's going to break down are over. And if you asked Steven Radicevich, their pro scouting director or Duke Tobin or Zach Taylor today, give me, you know, what you think is going to happen in the first 48 hours. Their list is as good as mine. Okay. Because they have an idea, but you never really know because it's wild out there, man. It's, it's wild out there. So it's, I don't think that there will be a shock, but that's why shocks are shocking because they're outside of the, the, the realm of what you expect. And you're talking about like the market coming back to them too. It did feel like last off season, there were so many fans that were just pulling their hair out because there wasn't any of that early movement that they had the off season before. Um, you know, you, you mentioned too, just how big that story was for how well read your story on that uh, signing was last off season. From that standpoint, is there any specific like type of signing that you're personally rooting for from your job perspective? Is there a signing that would, you know, be more interesting for you to cover or move like that? Or is there a player out there that you think, oh, this guy would be an interesting story to cover with Joe Burrow on the Bengals, that sort of thing? Um, I like to look for players that have won the good guy award for dealing with the media. <laughs> yeah, more good guys. <laughs> good guys. That's, I, I mean, I want, you want someone to show up that's new, that is a starter, that, wants to share his story. Um, and, and if there is a history of players that, uh, you know, are appreciate the media and are good at establishing relationships and wanting to help, um, and be nice to us, man, that's what I'm looking for. Can you be nice to us? I like yeah, that. Someone that's nice uh, to you personally. I mean, cause if, if we're looking at this thing selfishly, I mean, that's, but outside of that, I mean, yeah, you want a name for any number of reasons. Uh, you know, I saw Justin Simmons from Denver got released. Um, um, he was a pro bowler, all pro type guy, multiple year good guy, a winner. So love that. Uh, and he's a, he's a big name at a position that they'd be making a change at. Like that would be somebody who I would look at. Okay, it's a name people know. So there's name recognition to write his backstory someone who clearly has a good relationship with the media. They don't sign older guys, but I think anybody that has an important change of scenery where they're starting to think about what's next for their career, which could mean interest in building their brand further, doing some things that are outside, you know, of the normal, which is a big deal now in the league is everyone's trying to follow the Kelsey mold and, and think about their next step in marketing themselves and getting their message out there that would want to work with you in any capacity that way. Um, now, no Bengals fans are like, stop caring about your own profession. It's about winning football games. And I hear you, but from my perspective, that's the type of stuff that you look for. Cause that can tell the best stories. It can help you people understand football and the game better. And so I always look for stuff like that. So if you're talking though, about a player that wants to improve his media profile, maybe do like a big podcast like the Kelsey brothers, they can't come to this market because you've overtaken all the podcast room there is. <laughs> There's no more space. No, no player can start a show. Come on. He's got to compete with you at that point. No, no. they're not going to be able to do it. They, I'm happy. They can start a show. We have a whole on Tuesdays and Thursdays right now. Oh, uh, so like if that. they want to do their own show with a growler header here. I'm happy. Let's go. Let's All right. Do, yeah. Let's bring them into the network. Show. Okay. Let's I do like a that. Player show. I need somebody to do a show that I'm not involved in. That's what I'm all about. Let's go. Yeah. Okay. So from that standpoint, is there any, are there any free agents? You mentioned, you know, guys winning the good guy award. 
any that you're afraid of, any that you don't want to come to Cincinnati, not because of the fit, but because he's got a reputation for being a worse interview or harder player to deal with. Oh, that is, that's a hard one. Um, I, you know, off the top of my head, I, you don't hear a lot about that. Um, you know, where it's like, I feel like that's something that what, this is what happens. Okay. Here's how it works. Bengals sign player. You can't possibly know everyone and their backstories and whatever. The advantage of working at the athletic. And one of the things that I love about it is I can instantly get some great insight on everyone. Um, that's super trustworthy. Um, because I just reach out to whoever our beat person is. And we have the best beat people in my opinion in the game, because it's so many people that are on top of their markets. Um, and, and they'll give me, okay, you know, here's his dad's number and you'll love this person or look out for that. Or they don't talk to media or he's good in these situations or whatever, or, or this is a great part of his story that you could explore further. Here's a reunion connection like they it's just it's just institutional knowledge that so many people have and i try to offer that if like when jonah williams signs somewhere i have lots of stuff that i could inform you know he just has a new kid and he's really into being a dad and and he was really excited about the idea of maybe moving to left tackle um and and you know whatever having that instantly is huge to that's how i find it out though but to tell you right now like it would probably take from them saying, "Oh, you're not sorry about your luck, bro. You're not. You're, you're not going to yeah. like this." Is where you kind of find out that you're not going to like you because there's just there's so there's so many people uh, that you have that you have to deal with there that that make it really hard um, to to know everybody and who would be good and who's who's not great to you know to to understand and and work with. That was a good that was a good answer because I'll admit that question was sort of a trap. I just kind of wanted to see if you would just <laughs> talk Name smack somebody. about some players like, yeah, I really hope this jerk doesn't come and it just tarnishes your relationship with that guy just out of the shoot, you know? Yeah. Well, uh Clayus Campbell would be great. He like has already won Walter Payton like man of the year. Uh and he's old, he's older. He's like, oh, let's go, let's do that. But yeah, the, the opposite side of that. Uh, maybe, maybe let me let me marry. I've got the whole list of free agents in front of me right now. I'll get back to that later. The on bad that. guy Let's, award that's probably something that you guys probably just keep in house. We right? have that's discussed not... that has been discussed amongst the uh pro football writers association the concept of having the bad guy award, um, just so that everybody knows what they're getting themselves into before it ever even happens. But I don't, I don't think we want to uh organizationally uh have that <laughs> yeah, reputation like that. for distribute and what would the plaque like what's the trophy what's the plaque look like for the bad guy award it's just a picture of an athlete giving you the bird you know what i mean like yeah for sure i think some i think some athletes might revel earning that so i think oh, that's point a of pride for so yeah. many absolutely right yeah. you'd really walk into a, some extra i don't want them that. trying to earn it yeah yeah <laughs> Especially when their peers are like, oh, you got another bird award this year. Wow. <laughs> that's your third. You've been on three teams in three years and won the bird at every place. Yeah, that's just a lead among some of those guys. <laughs> um, obviously, a, a big theme for next week is going to be, you know, the safety market and uh, what the Bengals might do there. This is a question from Brian on Twitter about free agent uh, safeties. Actually, we have, it's a two parter. So let's back it up a little bit. This is from a rags to riches. He wants to know if he's the only one wondering how come no one is talking about Tyson Anderson being on the roster. He's wondering uh, what they're seeing that tells them that Scott deserved more snaps on defense. He thinks Anderson could be amazing uh, as a safety if he's given a chance. And then um, so address Tyson Anderson first, and then I've got a part two on safeties. I need to ask you. Um, I don't think Tyson Anderson has ever gotten the chance to really prove that he could be an answer at safety. They're trying to get older there, not younger. And, and, and so, you know, they were last year, obviously going to have Dax Hill and Nick Scott get a chance. And then Jordan battle. All of these are players that were drafted above Tyson Anderson, you know, fifth round pick. They love Tyson Anderson as a reserve safety who could be a star on special teams and he was kind of developing into that he just he missed his whole first year with an injury which is kind of a red shirt they kind of they kind of faked that injury I mean, let's be honest okay he's just sitting there and then last year he actually gets hurt um after having that great preseason game i think there was a lot of hope for tyson anderson 
and they really liked him as a special teamer. And if there would have been injuries there, comfortable with him having to be the guy that steps up. But he is the ultimate fourth safety, like a special team star who in a pinch could come up and play safety for you. Um, but that's kind of what that is. And I, it, and he can grow if he has another great preseason, you never know. Like, but I think his role was more viewed as um, the, the special teams safety type. Yeah. That does seem if you had a question, if you thought you had a real pressing need at safety, that he's not going to be the only answer to that this off season. The, the part two of this comes from Brian on Twitter. Um, you know, obviously talking about uh, Von Bell and the hole that he left in the defense. If you're looking at this free agent safety class, which one is the Von Belziest of the safeties that you could pick up? Ah, yes, the Von Belziest. You know, I mean, I the the thing about Von Bell, we've talked about trying to recreate signing Von Bell, is he came out of nowhere in that they didn't – People didn't think he'd be available, and then some mess happened in New Orleans, and next thing you know, there he was on day whatever of free agency sitting there, and they said, hey, wow, I can't believe he's there. Let's make a move. So the interesting thing is you have approximately 242 veteran safeties currently available. Like It is unbelievable. Everyone is getting it's released. Crazy. I've never seen this happen. Between free agent safety and free agent running back, I mean, you just have – it's not good for for the uh, Econ 101 supply and demand folks if you're on the player side, okay, because the, the prices are going to go down on these guys. Teams are going to get value. Guys that are really good that you don't think you have any business getting for five, six, seven million dollars, I think you're going to. And that's kind of what happened with Von Bell. So who would that be this year? I look at two high, more high-profile – guys uh darnell savage from green bay who's coming off a, a fifth year option a former first round pick great for green bay people think that he's going to get a big deal but is anybody going to get a big deal and if and if he finds that no one's he's not getting it because there's so many other options now he comes back to a more comfortable space where the Bengals are like, that's very Von Belly, a dude who's coming off his, his rookie deal and can come in and, and, and be a stud for you. Xavier McKinney would be another one who everybody thought was going to get a ton from the giants um, who was a captain there and a great player and a, and a high pick who could see all of these players bring him back down to a more comfortable space. And maybe then the Bengals come back into the picture. That's very Von Belly to me when you're talking about trying to find that guy. So those would be the two names that probably stick out when you're thinking about how all of these free agent safeties that are out there now are, are going to affect, you know, the type of player that you can get and that can fit what they're looking for. I mean, it does seem like an off season where you can get some really good value in that position and might also make you feel dumb if you had the player that was earning a ton of money when you could have had the cheaper option, which is sort of, I know you guys have talked about the Joe Mixon stuff kind of similar in that regard where you have a highly paid running back and there's going to be a lot of good affordable options out there. Uh, given that there are so many of these safeties though, do you think that this is going to be something that would happen later in the free agency period and maybe not be one of the top priorities for the team where it's not going to be a move that happens, you know, like next week? Running back, well, probably it's hard to say. Mm -hmm. Running back and safety feel like a game of chicken across the league of who's going to jump in first, who's going to sit there and say, okay, I'll do it now. Um, because because of how many there are, I feel like a lot of people are going to sit back and wait um, and see – you know, when it shakes out, who's left without who, you know, you want the, you want the one that uh, the musical chairs game and they're left standing there and they're like, all right, I'll take it for 3 million. I thought I was going to be in one of those chairs though. And so I think everyone's going to be waiting to see what that is, which I think will slow down both of those. Um, so I don't, you know, what does that look like? Is that Thursday or Friday? Does that go through the weekend? Are we tracking Darnell Savage at Kenwood Mall? I certainly hope so. <laughs> we need Darnell Savage and Joey Votto pushing carts together at the uh, the Whole Foods in Kenwood, and uh, and we could we could really be on to something here. For uh, maybe we should do like a live uh, free agency show just from Kenwood Mall. You know, just uh, on the lookout for whatever. Anytime we see somebody that looks like they could be a player, we'll just pull them on, do a quick interview with somebody. <laughs> 
And, um, you know, I, that does remind me the only time like I spent 18 months as Mo's first producer, you know, as we were getting his show off the ground and we did get an intern banned from Kenwood Mall, which how'd you uh, do that by go for going over there talking to people? Well, we sent him out there to get uh, I think we dressed him up as Uncle Sam and then sent him out there just to tell people to vote for the show. I don't even remember <laughs> what the reason was specifically, but. Yeah, some rent a cop ended up uh, kicking him out of the mall permanently, and I don't think he had the power to do that. But I think the guy could have just gone to the parking lot and taken off the giant hat and walked back in. But I always liked, good... I always like the people like at the uh, in tax season that stand out in front of the tax places dressed like the Statue of Liberty or something and are forced to dance. Like it must be in their contract that you can't just be out there holding a sign that says, you know taxes and cash down with an arrow or something you have to be out there dressed like the statue of liberty and dance at the same time like it's just that is and they don't stop it's sort of like the temple owl mascot has to <laughs> flap his wings the entire time uh it's a part of the deal or saint joe's saint one joe's, of the owls yeah. one joe's of the owls house. does like that, uh, maybe. And they have to flap their wings the entire time and i always i've always it always felt cruel to me like why yeah like you're doing enough they're doing enough. Why you got to push them this far? I just like that you think that those people have a contract. Yes. Like that is written yes. up that the Statue of Liberty lady has like an official contract. That's on her resume. She takes that to other places. I've been yeah. the tax Statue of Liberty person before. Here's, I mean, that, here's, a, just here's a video of me dancing in, in 2018 in Deer Park. Yeah, I was doing the Macarena in 2006. <laughs> Here it is. Look at that form. Hire me for tax season. Those people are just one step above the wacky inflatable arm guy. I don't think there's paperwork oh. involved with these jobs. No, I, I think there is. There's paperwork. You both write your name and you write number one, wear costume. Number two, dance continuously. Sign here. That's it. That's all it says. That's what they need to happen. And they don't want to see any breaches of contract on the 20 bucks they're giving you to do this. Yeah, they're like, they pull you in at the end of the day. Listen, we had a secret shopper drive by the road three hours ago. They got a video of you half heartedly doing the dance. So you're docking your pay here 25 percent, yeah. as in your contract that's why you you write those up i suppose <laughs> i love it uh, this is a good time too since we're mentioning you know uh advertising if you want to advertise on the podcast we will not probably show up at your place of work as a uh, statue of liberty i was gonna say you know maybe we'll do a live show but not we're not gonna be statue of liberty style but maybe we should hire our own statue of liberty to get people to li listen to the podcast i don't know where we would put them in this city that's a great question i mean where you know you know where we could put them we could put them just walking along the side of the norwood lateral for people that are frustrated once it shut once it shuts down and yeah. like getting detoured off to the side in frustration and we could be like this can make you happy right and they're all sitting there they're backed up in traffic and they're already in their cars, so they just quickly switch over to our podcast and subscribe. That's what I, I think. They just walk along the side of the Norwood Lateral with a sign. Okay, yeah, we are now hiring that position. So if you want to send yeah. us your resumes <laughs> and uh, any previous work experience, go ahead and email that to us. Yeah, I'll I, take I, I all videos of you dancing on the side of the street. I don't want people though to think our podcast is why the lateral is closed. If they're like, no, "What, is, no, what are they doing connected. here?" Oh, it's just podcast advertising. They've closed the highway for podcast advertising. <laughs> We're not responsible for any of this. They're doing very important work, I'm told. We did. <laughs> You've been told. They are doing important work. Yeah. We yeah. Uh, we do have a, an email question here from a listener, which we always encourage. Um, this just says, welcome aboard. I listened to last week's Who Day Light while driving back from practice of a T-ball team I'm coaching. Mm. So it's nice to hear you both understand the struggle in light of that, in last week's proposed combatives, can you ask Paul why his assistant baseball coaches still have a job? <laughs> it's, a, it's a great, I mean, because we haven't done anything yet. We had one meeting. We only had one, one major meeting, so we haven't had any reason yet. But, you know, they're on, they're, they're, they're under a close eye, obviously, because that's what I think when you're the head coach, you always think of, how can I fire this person as quickly as possible is the first thing you want to think of. And they have a job because it's not a job because we're all there making no money. So I feel like it doesn't even count. I would welcome anyone to show up and like just play catch with the kids. Uh, if you can pass a background check, that's, I mean, because that's really all that we're, we're just looking for anyone that can stand out here and, you know, 
just it, they're they're six. Okay, we're not we're not uh, saying the development is just not happening with the infield coach. Well, that would be a weird vibe too. If you're like, all right, we all want to be assistant. Nobody wants to be the head coach. Finally, you volunteer to step up, and your first move is firing the entire staff. Just, <laughs> you know what? I'm taking this absolute power. You clowns are out of here. Yes, Bill. Bill Belichick style. No days off. Right. Yeah. It's just it's just grinding people. That's all. It's what it's about. Trying to just push them down until they're done with me. Uh, part two of his question were: Are any of the team snack providers already on the hot seat? Is Debbie one wrinkly Clementine away from being shown the door? <laughs> snacks are important. Like that, if you coach youth sports, like that is pretty much snacks and drinks are the paramount thing that you can do to keep your kids happy after an athletic contest. There is no question. There, it, you know, it's like people say. Really, the the second most important coach in the building is the offensive line coach. I feel that way about the snack director of snacks. Like that is a critical position and you can't have a a game that goes by and someone forgot it was their turn and we don't have anything. You've just ruined the game for the children. So that is important. You know, I I feel like I feel like that's a pretty good corollary there. Director of snacks is the offensive line coach of T-ball and I plan on treating it as such with a, a very close eye. Even coaching girls youth soccer, I learned an early early in my tenure as a coach to have the backup drinks and snacks because there's going to be a parent that drops the ball, even though they had one job to do and it's going to crush all these little girls. So if you have some extra goldfish and you know juice boxes in your car, you can save the day. You know those games aren't won and lost on the field; it's before, and that's not before in practice. That's before in what drinks and snacks you bring to the game. Yes, always, always have a giant like Costco box of goldfish in your car in need of emerge in case of emergency. Just always be prepared. You know, it is crazy. Don't get ready. Just yeah. stay ready. Absolutely. And it what is crazy <laughs> is the lengths that some parents will go to. They'll come with like prepackaged like gift bags for each child oh. that has like a healthy snack, a sweet snack, a juice box, a little toy. It's like what this isn't a birthday party. <laughs> I don't need that. I don't need that. Um, um all right, we should switch out of uh of our Q and A's and we'll get to some of our questions here that we have for each other. Yeah. So my question, obviously, free agency is right on on the corner. Um, And we talked a little bit about just the combine and how much you love to drink, uh, but the rhythms (laughs) of the job, right? Just the the rhythms of being a sports reporter, obviously in season, it's very formulaic of like, you know, when the games are, when the post game access is, what types of stories you're going to kind of need throughout the week. What it, it, how does that change for free agency? Because it's you're not always dealing with the same people anymore. It's more players, there's agents. And, and how difficult is that switch to report on something like free agency than just regular season games? Well, the nice thing about the season is that you just ev- you can count on everything. You, you, you lose your weekends, but you know the structure. You know when your time off is. Everybody gets used to it. It's just it's playing the same song over and over and over again. This is much more like uh, I'd be like uh, Pandora. You don't know what song's coming next or if you're going to hate it, if you're going to try to skip. It's, it's just you're always a little more on call um, and you're more reliant, you know, just on people that, you know, and, and just hearing stuff, whether it is, yeah, agents, coaches, players, whatever, like you're you're more on the phones all the time. And just the all hours nature of there, there's nothing worse than waking up to something that happened overnight like that's just like can i sleep you know or like you, you're just you question when can i sneak in a shower just in case because you're waiting on calls from like four different people so free agency sucks in that way but it's one week really where it's like that next week will be like that and after that like it's never that big of a deal if you miss you know, uh, a little bit of something here or there. Uh, but yeah, this, that, this one week is kind of the one where you just, I hate having the, fo- having to have the phone all the time. Um, but so that, that's the biggest difference. One week of not showering. That's not too bad. I, I do still shower. You just well, are like that's worried what I heard. when you do. And well, it's, it's not what I heard. I heard that yeah. you boycott the shower. Your family must love that. Just being yeah. around you for that. Yeah. Week. Uh, I have one for you. So I'm here okay. talking about, I'm here talking about my sources. Do you have any sources for me? Do you have do. something okay, that so you can help me with? Like that I can kind of, you know, uh, I'll throw this benefit? tip to you. 
And if you want to follow up on this with your investigative skills, that's up to you. But I heard this from another comedian who was working at a funny bone. Oh. And after the show, an audience member told him that his friend was friends with a cheerleader for the Cincinnati Bengals who told him, who told the boyfriend, who told the friend, who told the audience member, who told the comedian, who told me that Joe Burrow had the thing on his wrist, not because of any, you know, discomfort or anything he had before, but because he punched a wall after losing a video game. And that's what really started this whole wrist saga. So my question to you is how concerned do we need to be that Joe Burrow is not good at video games? Wow. That that's is, a big one. That is a big one. I mean, Michael Jordan's not losing games to people. He's winning. It doesn't matter a, what the contest we need a, is. We need a breaking news sounder on this show. Uh, I didn't realize it was going to be like that. Well, first of all, we know he plays video. He plays video games with his high school buddies like every Monday That's or Tuesday. It's part of his routine. Yeah, but we thought he was good at video games, and it comes out now that he's not. In well, I, I feel like he plays at a high level. So okay. you can't – it's like, you know, I'm not going to hate on the guy who – you know, you always hear these guys who went to a great college program and, of course, didn't lose much in high school because they're great. And then you got to ask them when their rookie year how hard it is for them to deal with having lost seven games. Well, it doesn't mean they stink. You're nine and seven or ten and seven. They just lost seven games. You're just not used to that. So I think Burrow just plays at that NFL level of uh, Smash Brothers, right? Yeah. Um, which is I also I don't know how the cheerleader found this out. That was never explained to me. So I'm left wondering if it if that's not a rumor that's going around the building that you probably would have heard. I'm just left to assume that this cheerleader was playing the video game as well. It's possible. The, the cheerleaders was, talk. Yeah, I mean, and they hear her on the little game speaker. You know, she's got the headset around. on. She hears somebody punching a wall. She's like, that's it. That's how I it mean, happens. I'm not here to make any accusations because I don't know any of this, but you would feel like it's possible there could be some fraternization between a cheerleader and a football player. I mean, there's no history of that in the history of sports at any level of cheerleaders and football players getting together, but maybe that could happen. Maybe that would be something that would happen. And then next thing you know, the rumor mill starts swirling. And that's uh, how it got to her heard from a person okay. who heard from a person and, 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 and off we go. With Very this, reputable with possibility that he's not good at video games, which would make me rethink everything Burrow. But I don't know where to feel after this. <laughs> only, there's only one level of person that's crazier than that conspiracy theorist person, and that is uh, the worst Internet commenters. We are lucky to have good comments on you know you on your stories on The Athletic. Uh, all the YouTube comments have been very positive this week on the new podcast and stuff. But we will still be looking at the comments. I know you famously do not. Uh, you claim that at least, and that's you, you know, somebody will tweet to, or reply to a tweet of yours on your story. And then, you know, you'll come out and reply to it. And it makes me kind of question your whole, I never read the comments thing, but maybe <laughs> I read um, them when I ask for them. And that's usually about the only time, but go so, ahead. Go ahead. What do you got? There is one that I feel like we need to address from Dan Southall. Um, he said he, he loved Paul and Jay's content. Uh, the old podcast was essential listening for any Bengals fan. Delighted to see them back together. Podcast name raises an eyebrow, though. And I believe there was a, a link included with that. Oh, uh, yes. Did so, you see that one? Yes. So this came this came to uh, my attention. There's nothing you, 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 ever, you never know. Something like this that's kind of a surprise. And we unveil this whole thing. And there's a lot of newness involved. You never want to feel like I, I forgot something or I, I made a misstep in this because this is like months of me planning every little bit by bit and putting this whole thing together. You never want on the first day someone to send you an Urban Dictionary screenshot. Like, yeah, that's, that's never what you want. And so I receive an Urban Dictionary screenshot about the growler. Um. And what apparently it means now, I, I'm, I'm old, I'm an old, right? Like where I'm not amongst the young that probably have their slang that Urban Dictionary is referencing. So the percentage of you that knew this, I wasn't overwhelmed by people who sent me Urban Dictionary links or had these types of comments, but there weren't zero. There weren't, there wasn't just one. Which okay, it wasn't me, just uh, one. Okay. It wasn't, <laughs> which, which made me wonder, like, did I really, did, how out of the loop? And I, and I realize I am out of the loop. Uh, but I feel like, look, what, what can I do? 
What well, see, I'm do? more out of the loop than you are. Like, what is our, what's the problem with the name? It is um, about a, a not great looking female body part. So you told me that. <laughs> Apparently, and like who who just is, like dictionary. walking around with that? Yeah, I mean I, that's something that they have to know. They're not just googling it and seeing like, ha, let's just take a stab here. That's something that they had chambered and ready to go. Well, I I mean I guess that's I guess this is there are circles of people that know that this is this is common. I have whenever someone has reached out to me that didn't mention it, I have kind of asked like, hey. Do you what do you think about the name? Does it sound, you know, I don't know, dirty to you or anything? And I haven't gotten a whole lot of people that said that it did. Uh, so I, I feel OK. But again, I, I feel a need to address. I feel like we should start going around looking up every podcast name that we can find and, and putting it in the Urban Dictionary and seeing what's the percentage that you just happen to have something that shows up in there that you didn't even realize. And maybe there's a whole demographic of that. Yeah, maybe all podcasts are dirty. Maybe <laughs> that's what it comes down to. We didn't mean to. So the point, I mean, I hope it's known that this is this is the name for a certain type of beer that you can get at breweries, which is based off why we named it the Growler Bet before on the old HTPG show, which included the word growl. And so that was the part of why we called it that. It certainly had nothing to do with wanting to be cheeky about such urban dictionary things so hey we're gonna roll i'm rolling i'm not changing it now yeah okay? you're in too deep you're in too deep to the <laughs> female genitalia thing it's just i didn't even know when you told me i looked it up and i'm like this can't be true and the entry that was written there you know it checked out it was written by somebody called the snatch investigator so that person <laughs> has to be experienced i don't know how he got his certification but it it sounds legit so if anybody would know it would be that sort of investigator i suppose yeah. um how i think all we need to does do... he have i'm curious how many entries he has put into the urban dictionary himself i really don't want to know that i don't want to go any farther <laughs> into the world of the smash investigator Can you search my author in there this guy might be the writer of the entire urban dictionary <laughs> he might have changed the game but it's up to us to change it back and make sure the growler overtakes female genitalia in terms yeah. of, you know, maybe it'll be slang for like the greatest new podcast that shows up about your favorite team. That's yeah. what it'll be known as. So I hope so. I remember specifically when uh, Bill Simmons created the ringer being like, man, can't believe they used the name of that Johnny Knoxville movie for, uh, and now no one even thinks about the Johnny Knoxville movie. They just think about the fact that he's created this gozillion dollar podcast network that spotify bought up so that's what i how i prefer to think of it going uh hopefully we don't end up being the lesser known of the two of these items i don't even think johnny knoxville would have made that comparison i feel like <laughs> you you stuck up for him more than he would have had his own back on that one <laughs> no doubt uh all right so do you have any, do you have any more comments that you want to ambush me with um, there's another one that, uh, on your Dax Hill story, which was very good up there. Uh, it's just somebody who wants to ask uh, more of a draft related question. Do the Bengals need to change their approach? Um, it's time that they could learn a lesson in the first three rounds. You have to pick players that are good at the role that they played in college. Uh, Jackson, Carmen, Dax Hill, Zach Carter are recent picks that did not play the position in college the way the Bengals had them play it. Do they need to change their approach? Um, I bet there's projection to every like there I don't necessarily think it's a I, I'm I see what you're saying with that but like everybody's kind of a projection and plays and moves around in college and you're you're thinking about people doing other things because that's where they're set up to do um I I see where you're coming from but I I don't think that that's something they're setting out to do I you know Car these are guys like especially offensive linemen i feel like half of them you're like every because every best one at a school usually plays left tackle or whatever but is more of a guard because that's the what their physical setup is there's a projection to everybody sometimes it's position change sometimes it's body type the guys that are going to show up and do what they did in college exactly and are great at it and were great at it in college are typically guys that were picked in the first round i mean that there's just not as 
many. You, you still have to start getting into different challenges, and that's why they're around later in the draft. So it's I hear what you're saying. I think you want to pick people to show up and play what they played because you know what it is, but the NFL, you're changing how you play no matter what position you play going from college to the NFL. So I think that's, that's always kind of – the projection is always kind of part of it. But noted, noted on that. I don't necessarily totally disagree with you. Yeah, it does feel like it's oversimplifying it a little bit. You know, the college game is different from the pro game, and there's always got to be some of that projection. But um, it's also easy to cherry pick those picks that didn't work out and just ascribe it to that anyway. Yeah. I mean, is Zach Carter's role that different from what it was in college? He moved. I mean, he got bigger and moved inside and 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 I yeah, a little bit. I mean, start what they're asking him to do now. Uh, but, you know, that's that's also it's defensive line. I mean, it's, it's different, but it's not that different. And mm -hmm. maybe he just was never really quite the guy anyway. And I mean, that's who you're betting on. That's, that's why you, you were, you got him in where you did in the third round because he, he was a guy that would have to move positions and there's a projection there, but he's a great athlete and he did have to do a lot of good things. So that's, that's all, that's all part of it. Um, all right, good, good, co good comment usage. I don't feel particularly ambushed. Um, and so I feel I feel okay with it. I expected it to be worse and more negative towards myself, and so and not just the your new project. Yeah, I think everybody's everybody's just being nice right now. I'm sure it'll get it'll get uh, much meaner. Yeah, but you can reach out to me on email, Twitter, however you want to reach me with your questions to ambush Paul, and I will make sure that we do that. All right, okay, comedy time here, uh, Mark. Let's uh, let's go. Where are you? First of all, where are you at next? Yeah, I've got my you guys plugs. Doing, you're doing the uh, the the comedy gym. Is that what it, we're calling it? The joke gym with the our friend gym. Josh Sneed at uh, yeah. the Madison at that room, the Madison Theaters room, Madison Live. Yeah, that's the first Tuesday of every month. That was a fun one. We just did one. Our next one there is April second. Uh, tonight I am at Northwood Cider Co in Norwood. I got it right last last week. I didn't have the name of it, but I, I've got it now. Northwood Cider tonight. Um, and then I will be at Commonwealth Sanctuary April 6th. That's the next big headlining show at a club in the uh, Cincinnati, Kentucky region. And then I'll be at the Dayton Funny Bone in April with our, our guy, Josh, and the St. Charles Funny Bone in Missouri, April 11th through 14th. So if you're a Missouri listener out there, uh, come to that. And then I'll be at Lexington. And then there's a bunch of other dates on my Instagram. You can get those there. You know they break down they break down on our like dashboard all our listeners by region. And, Ooh, that's uh, good to know. I know. I kind of want to see how many Missouri people that we have. Like if how deep how deep I can go. I don't know if I can get all the way down into specific state. I have country popular in the United States. You'll find. All uh, right. So shout out to our UK people. To shout out to our UK and Canada people. And uh, twenty two people in Switzerland. Good to have wow. you on board with us. Huge in Switzerland. I think it's because we're so neutral, you know, we're just exactly kinda, we're right down the middle. Maybe uh, in Switzerland, they, they just thought that this was a different type of growler show that they were getting. Yeah, they're very good <laughs> urban dictionary Maybe, people. In Switzerland. I'm surprised to have 141 listeners from Iran. I didn't see that one coming. Well, we're going to uh, lose some because it's Iran. You're supposed oh, to sorry, pronounce sorry. it wrong. So they're yeah, that's well, going to knock us well, down. There goes those numbers. That's that's unfortunate. Uh, but anyway, I don't I can't get down to state yet. I'm going to work on that for next week and see if I can. Shout out to our Missouri, our Missouri people. Yeah, there. I'm coming uh, to Missouri. For you, coming to Kentucky. Uh, and... Do you have Do you have any new uh, bits that you are working on? Something from the joke gym that you felt like you you really got a good uh, party pump on? Okay, so one of the things I'm working on from Joke Gym, and this is I talked about school last week. This is a uh, just about preschool and how high stakes the uh, the learning is because at, at Thanksgiving they gave these kids worksheets in preschool, right? And it was just a blank picture of a turkey. And the instruction said, disguise your turkey so Farmer Tom can't catch him and kill him for Thanksgiving. That is high pressure arts and crafts, <laughs> right? For a little kid. If you're like, okay, Lindsay, are you any good at disguises? Are you good enough to save a life? <laughs> That's going to scar a kid. And if you're that teacher, do you only hang half of those pictures, right? Like, oh, what's wrong, Jeremy? You don't see yours up here? Yeah. Yeah. Nobody was fooled by the sunglasses. Try harder. <laughs> That's what we'll be working on. 
Tonight, these are, you have you have like the pile on the ground. You cover it in red paint. These are the turkeys that died because you weren't good enough, right? Also, like you, you've had kids that age. Like they don't remember Thanksgiving. It doesn't matter how hard they try. In two days, they're about to go to a family Thanksgiving where they see a giant cooked turkey, probably for the first time that they can remember. So they're going to think they failed no matter what. The hard part is around Thanksgiving time. It like discussing that you see a real turkey somewhere or they're talking about real turkeys and then you got to point out they're like wait well that's not what we're eating is it like it really is yeah it kind of is yeah like it it was killed for our delight and you Um, don't even want to know where those dino nuggets came from (laughs) (laughs) not real dino but you're not going to be pleased with that process either oh side note uh i was at the uh, Joe Burrow had a uh, had a charity thing this past Sunday, and then he had a, there was a reception at at the Kroger on the Rhine, and it was a lot of Kroger people, and there were kids asking questions. One kid, shout out this kid, asked Joe Burrow what his favorite dinosaur is, and I thought that was a great question. Can you you want to take a stab at Joe Burrow's favorite dinosaur? What you think he would say? I get, it's got to be the T Rex because of the small arms, right? Oh, small look hands, at you. small arms. Look at you, small. No, I, I felt like T Rex would have been too cliche of an answer. So he's he's not a cliche uh, type in that regard. He went pterodactyl. Oh my gosh, I was gonna go pterodactyl. But I was I, surprised I just to jump. hear him go pterodactyl. I mean, it, maybe he's just no. He's just his first couple of years of his career. You got to be able to be mobile and fly away, and and uh, maybe that's a part of it. But I, I, I thought it was a, a bold a bold decision on his part to go pterodactyl. You know, maybe he'd be more of a raptor guy, but I guess not. Maybe they're cliche now. I don't know. Yeah, Jurassic Park made them cliche, which is yeah. not fair. So shout out to Joe for going uh, going pterodactyl. I liked and the, How the was kid the that asked that show? question. I was the soup uh, show fun? The soup thing? Yeah. It was, it, I mean, you gotta cover stuff like that. It's you big know check. It's, big check was handed over. People cut carrots. It was, it was, it was fine. Joe was there, right? Like if Joe's somewhere and we're able to be there, we pretty much go. Yeah. Otherwise you're not going to get that pterodactyl stuff. That kid deserves a little tip from, you know, the media there, giving them the real answers. Yeah. Now we've got, now we've got this nugget. Um, All right. Let's uh, we should, we should wrap, we should wrap for some, some dad life. Yeah. Well, we did get fact checked. Um, oh, we off did. my story last week. We did. Off, I was doing that gym teacher bit, which I did try at my shows. And uh, gosh, I did a, a private show this past weekend for a, a Catholic school. I was raising money for the eighth grade class trip to DC. And uh, wow. that was exciting. Yeah, they're, they're sending their eighth graders to storm the Capitol. So we were raising money <laughs> for that. Any Catholic school, if there's drinking involved, it's a good charity church festival. This was a comedy show at a brewery. So this was a good time. But so we got fact checked. I was making a joke about how it's not uh, a smart idea to have the gym teacher giving the puberty talk at the schools. Somebody on Twitter did hit us with that. uh, They were listening to it. The first episode, they are an elementary music teacher. And the reason the PE teacher does the puberty talk is because PE teachers are also certified to teach health. Um, yeah, I can understand that, but there is, they're way more excited about the dodgeball part of their job. Any health (laughs) teacher, any gym teacher you've had that is also the health teacher, they're way more excited about the gym part. They're not psyched about talking about, you know, young people's bodies and all that kind of stuff. Also, and I asked this crowd because they were raising money for the eighth graders or a lot of eighth grade teachers there. I said, does the gym teacher at, you know, guardian angels or whatever school this was, do the the puberty talk and they said no it was not the uh gym teacher slash health teacher at that school oh are you mm-hmm. you're fact checking the fact checker i'm rebutting rebutting the rebuttal is what i'm doing <laughs> and yeah they said no it's not the uh the gym teacher at their school and i will say it is because they just don't do a puberty slash sex talk at their school maybe that's a catholic school thing but yeah so nobody does it at that school but technically it's still a rebuttal to the rebuttal well I appreciate that. And I'm just saying, how, how hard is it to get a health certification? Is that hard? Like, it I don't know. And look, this is me without a health certification. I have no idea. Is that is that hard thing to do? Like, how many how many do? Are, how many people have a health certification in, 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 in education? I will say that, yeah, it's probably harder to get that certification than whatever the snatch investigator had to fill out to get his <laughs> paperwork done to alter the urban dictionary. 
Um, but what is what's new in your dad life? Well, it's Disney on Ice weekend, Mark. Oh boy. You know what that means? It's uh it's time to try to fend off the innovators at Disney that know how to take all of your money. I mean, they are it's incredible like their ability to know exactly how much you are willing to uncomfortably spend to keep the peace at any event, whether you're talking about a Disney world, we're talking about watching something, what you're talking about going to Disney on ice. It's like, we have perfectly priced this ridiculous wand for $26 and 42 cents. Cause that's just enough for you to be like, fine, I'll get you the wand. But what, here's how they get you with the wands is when you go in like i'm like i'm not buying that i'm not doing it but as soon as you sit down and you look around the whole arena and they just see everyone with these wands you have to like you just have to realize oh i have to go do it and you're like but i'm not it's worth me dealing with them complaining the whole time i'm not paying more than 54 dollars for such things right and they're like two wands for 53.96 like, <laughs> yeah. oh, disney why are you always so perfectly prepared for this moment we it's need those people working on the podcast we need them doing the, the ad sales for this thing they, they'll oh. be unlocking everything for us yes uh so disney on ice they put on an incredible show like i won't we went last year and i was legitimately impressed but they they got the most money possible and they won't let you bring your own wands in and they have really serious people at the entry point like if you try to taking it away from you and throwing it in a garbage can and making children cry without remorse, which I always felt like was a little tough, but that's how serious they are. It's very, it's kind of a little bit more like a military operation on the outside than you would think, considering the softness of Disney as a whole. I wish my kids would get into the Disney stuff. They're very, all three of my daughters are kind of anti princess. They're huge Star Wars kids. They're going through a Star Wars kick right now. So if we make the Disney World plunge, it's going to be because of that someday. But I, here's why I would prefer the Disney stuff, right? Because my oldest daughter, she's 10, about to turn 11, and she's a nature freak, you know, loves going to the aquarium, wants to save the world and that stuff. So it's like, I would much rather pay to take you to Disney World when instead she wants me to stop global warming. I'm like, I, I can't do that. I, we can go to Disney. I'll take you to Disney on ice. I can't stop global warming. I can't save the oceans. Make yeah. it a little bit more realistic. Ask. I'll buy the wands. I don't care. I can't get the trash out of the ocean. I mean, I like her thinking that you could, though. You know, like that's that's nice to know that that she's thinking that it's possible. But yeah, right. that's ask. a job my dad can do. He can yeah. save the planet. <laughs> and we will. If this podcast is successful, by God, we will save the planet. That's right. one version of the growler will save the planet. It remains to be seen which one it will be us or the female genitalia version. But <laughs> it's the growler to the rescue for sure. <laughs> on that note, that feels like a good wrap. It feels like it a good wrap for SI on that one. Nice tie a nice little bow on that one. Uh, uh, make sure y'all every Friday uh, we're going to be here uh, with who day light and uh, we will, you know, give you, you drive, uh, you drive the bus on this one a little bit. And uh, we, you send us your questions, send them to Mark. You can send them to me, drop them to us on, on Twitter X, follow us on Instagram, the growler podcast. You can drop stuff in there um, and follow along and, and send us whatever you want us to talk about. And we'll make sure to do that and we'll be here every friday and of course uh balds don't lie myself mo uh, dave ninimitz every monday myself and jay on uh pd and j every every wednesday next week will be a wild one uh because we've got free agency going on so timing on all of it uh we're going to be uh outdated by the moment we hit publish uh, but we're going to do our best to make it all all work next week so make sure you guys check back in for all the Bengals free agent signings thanks everybody for sending everything in mark i guess we'll uh we'll see you out there we'll see you out there uh in in norwood yeah right? see norwood. me in person so come on out and check them out all right thanks everybody for listening we'll talk to you next time have a good one everybody